I am Josephine Bush. I have a lot of experience with DBA more recently in the last few years with cloud. You can reach me on Twitter at HelloSQLKitty and I do blog at SQLKitty.com. So first I just wanna briefly go over what is auditing. So I know a lot of people, at least here in America, we have the internal revenue service. People cringe when they hear about it being audited, right? It's a scary thing. But I think auditing is not a bad thing. I think it's actually a good thing. And you wanna make sure people are following proper procedure and auditing can help you figure out what you might want a procedure to look like if you don't have one in place already. And so maybe your company doesn't think it's important to audit. Maybe you're required, you're not sure how to go about it. Maybe you, you can't afford a third party tool, but even if you're not required, I think it shouldn't stop you from setting up auditing. I set it up because I got tired of people blaming the database why something was broken. And in the end, it was good. I prioritized auditing because we got acquired by a more heavily regulated company and they need auditing reports on a weekly basis. So with audit, out auditing, you're basically in the dark. You're, you don't know if something was changed and that's why it's broken. Maybe something got set up for one purpose and they got shared around and everybody's using it. So really you can just audit just about everything in SQL Server. Um, so, or in Azure in this case, but so quickly, here is just a high level cloud SQL auditing option. So really uh, Azure SQL managed instance, SQL Server VM, uh, Amazon Web Services, those are very similar, the RDS stuff, very similar to your, to your, you know, the VMs you may have on prem or in the cloud, right? So you can use SQL Server Audit extended events. The only difference is the, the storage you have to use. Like in a VM, you obviously have the disks, right? But with managed instance and RDS, you have to use cloud storage like uh, the Blob or S3, right? So the big difference is Azure SQL. And here you can't use SQL Server Audit and you can use extended events. Now, the thing is in the portal, there is an option for auditing Azure SQL and it's basically very similar to SQL Server Audit. It's just, it's just a little bit different to use. So I'm gonna go through that now because it's, it's different. And so basically, like I said, it's built into the portal. And so it's free or to cost depending on storage Really, it's only free up to a certain point, at, at one point at least, that was available. Don't use that for auditing because you're just going to run out of space most likely. Uh, so basically, a server audit, if you turn a server, it applies to all your databases. And there is a database auditing option, but you wouldn't want to use both at the same time. Otherwise, you're just going to get duplicates. So by default, there's no filtering either. So in SQL Server Audit, you can filter extended events. You can kind of filter things what you wanna see. Here, there's not by default, you just get everything, right? But there is a way to modify the default behavior of the auditing in Azure SQL. So you can use, uh, you, basically what happens here on this slide here shows you this, these are the actions it's getting by default. So this is basically everything. It's like a fire hose of information. So you can actually use PowerShell kind of narrow this down a bit more. And there's a link on the resources slide with some more information about this. These are just a couple of brief commands on the slide. So you can see like you can set policy, you can get policy to see. So you wouldn't get that fire hose. So I'm not gonna go through a detail on this because I don't have enough time in this <laughs> short presentation. So here is enabling as you see loading at server level, right? So you just basically, there's a button, you turn it on, you get a few options of where you can store it. And then also auditing Microsoft support operations, right? That's a thing that what Microsoft doing in the background, you can also audit that, which I recommend. You could store it in the same location or a different location. That's kind of up to you how you wanna store your audit data. So the three different destinations, the storage, which is the blob, you can put in a blob, log analytics, and then event hub. So we're gonna go through those here quickly. And so storage. Basically, you have to set up a storage account. And I, I put more, I showed these advanced properties for you. I never changed these, but just so you know, they're there. I wouldn't recommend zero retention days because that's forever. You probably don't need to keep your audit data forever, but so just know that it's there. And then when it writes to storage, it looks like this. It writes an XEL file, like extended events file, right? And it puts it into folders and subfolders and different days and stuff. 
I don't use this a lot. My favorite choice of storage is not this one, but if you were going to use this, I would think you need to find a way to power shell loop through all these files so you could look at them easily, query them. So that's just an option there for you. My favorite option is log analytics. And so you get you set up a log analytics workspace. Oh, by the way, I would say that for any of these options, it's best to put it in I always put in the same region just for, you know, make it easier for latency purposes, whatever. I'm not sure there would be for other, you know, if you put it way across the globe, perhaps, but I just always put in the same region for ease of use. So, when, and the thing I do to centralize in a way sort of is put all my Azure SQL databases in the same log analytics. And so this is the option here where I mentioned there might be a free choice for you. At least last I checked, you can get up to 500 megs of data per day and seven days of history. If you wanna try it out without cost, honestly, log analytics is not very expensive. So it's not a real roadblock to, if you have one that costs money. So I mentioned how you set it up in, at the server level, right? And it gets all the databases. If you wanna view the audit data, you do have to go into each database. This is one way, I'll show you another way that may be a little easier. So you go into database, you view the audit logs, you click log analytics, and then it brings up log analytics custo query. And so this is how you can query. It's very similar to, well, I mean, it's similar enough to SQL or PowerShell. If you're familiar with SQL, you wouldn't have a really hard time figuring out custo, I think. So I made some things happen like alter create table. You'll see some other stuff like declare at addition sys name type stuff in there. That's all the stuff happened in the background. That's why I mentioned earlier, you know, you may want to filter out some of that stuff, but that's there for you. You can always filter it in the custom query as well. So the other way that I like using to get to this data when you use log analytics is you can go straight into the log analytics workspace and then go into the workspace summary. And then you get this, this nice dashboard, you can click it, drill down. And so if you store all your Azure SQL databases in the same workspace, now you can see it all here in this one dashboard. So there it is. We'll look in a demo in a minute here so you can see it in action a bit more. So this last choice, I've actually never used, I wanted to provide it here in case somebody's excited about Event Hub. This does, it requires that it is in the same region as your database and server. So that's just something to note there. And then here's a quick screenshot of what it looks like in the portal. And now you need to set up a stream to consume events and write them to a target and it's captured a JSON, all this good stuff that I just, I personally don't use that. Like I said, I like log analytics. So I just kind of stuck with that. So then here is enabling at the database. So we're in the database itself in the Azure SQL database, right? And you can see that you could enable it here, but you're, you're sort of, well, it's not a red flag, it's a green flag. Your, your, your warning is it says server level auditing enabled in green, right? So that's a warning to you. You probably don't wanna enable at this database level unless you had some other specific need you wanna put in a different place for this one database or something. You know, there are use cases, of course, but I personally think if you're doing the server level, don't do it database level, or you just get a lot of duplicates. So we're, I'm gonna pop into the portal here. So if anybody had any questions about any of that stuff, I could answer as I go to the demo portion of this. I do not have any online questions. I will have a look okay. in the room over here. Okay. No questions, so go on with okay. your demo, please. Okay, cool. So here I am inside my, my Azure portal, right? So I have an Azure, SQL server databases set up and it's, so you have this menu over here. And so we're, like I said, we're in the SQL server level here, right? We're not in each individual database. So we're, we go into security auditing and then it really is as simple as turning on this, this button. I already have something to note is you have to have these storage or login or whatever you want to use set up already. It's not, you can't say create some new one here. So you just have to select your subscription, select your analyt log analytics workspace, and then hit save, right? So then down here, like I mentioned with Microsoft support operations, again, you can enable this and it'll just go, it can go into the same one, different one. It's up to you. 
I'm just not going to turn that on now just to, so that I don't have something extra going in there right now for you to see. The thing is, I will tell you that I did stuff before this presentation to make sure that there was something there for you to see in the, in the workspace, the log analytics workspace, because sometimes there's a little bit delay depending on what you're auditing, maybe nothing came through yet, or there's just a delay I've noticed. Sometimes it's very fast and set of stuff's in your, in your workspace. Sometimes it takes a while. So that being said, I will save here and I will not have changed much of anything for you right now, just because of time, more time constraints. But I promise I made changes in the, in the, in the past so you can see it at least. And so here we are, it's saving. So we'll wait for a sec. So it's like just what you wanna see is watching me wait for this. Usually it's faster than that. It's usually saves faster than that actually. Um, it's usually the thing is that it takes a while for the data to come through. So you're I all, You're all way, so 10 minutes oh, yeah. left. Oh, so, I'm sorry, what? 10 minutes left for your session. Okay, thanks. Oh yeah, thanks, the reminder. Okay, very good, thank you. So now I would see, so, so here you can see in here, there's no way you can really view anything uh, auditing wise, right? So I'm gonna go in here. So I see now here's my database, right? I'm gonna go into databases. I'm gonna see this specific database and then I'm gonna go down to auditing. And this is like where I could say, oh, that's interesting. Of course this happens. I said it's saved. Let's pretend like it's saved. Of course, this how this works fine every other time. And I'm in a live demo and it doesn't work right. Ah, there it is. It just took a sec. I guess I had to refresh. So now we see server level auditing is enabled, right? And then that's that's your warning. You don't really want to do it here unless you have a specific use case for storing this database's auditing data somewhere separate, or you're gonna you're gonna do something different here somehow maybe with powershell you're going to set this different anyway the point is don't enable it here if you've got it the server if at all possible because you're going to get duplicate stuff so once you're in this here now this is where you can view the audit logs so you click view audit logs and then you click log analytics so something to note really quickly here is that you're not going to see yeah oh that's okay that's okay you're not gonna see stuff just listed right here in this page in the audits. So, so don't be alarmed, it's, it's in the log analytics workspace here. So then you come in here and this is not gonna say find anything because I haven't done anything in the last, oops, last 24 hours. But if I said the last seven days, it might find something. I had done something previously. So, but needless to say, this is how the custom query works from the database side. This is this is a little bit wonkier if you ask me. I this is why I kind of like, I'm gonna show you really quickly the workspace side of things. And personally, that's why I like that better because it's a little bit easier. You go into workspace, your log analytics workspace, and then you say workspace summary, right? And so then you get this nice dashboard that when you change stuff, oh, look, there is some stuff in the last 24 hours because stuff I just did. So anyway, I'm gonna do last 30 days so you can get at least a nicer dashboard. You can see some of the stuff I've been changing over time. And so I really like this because now you can see it by action types. You can see it by different databases, different IPs, different principles, you know, you can drill in here and then it does do a custom query for you at that point. And this is what the cut, that's what it would look like on my database in the auditing had it loaded. And so this is what you, so then that's why I mentioned earlier, all these things that come through that are just background processes. That's why it would be good to filter. That's for a longer presentation. I'll figure that all out and show you at some point, not today because it's just too much for one 20 minute. So does anybody have questions about the demo? No questions on this side. Okay, cool. So like I mentioned earlier, if you didn't want to store your audit data in the portal, or maybe you're comfortable already with extended events, and uh, maybe that's a good use case for you. There's a, I have a longer session on why you would want to use extended events versus SQL Server audit and things like that. But this is kind of nice because it's very controlled. Say, I just want to get the Josephine user. 
And then I can do that with extended events in Azure SQL database, right? And I can just, then the thing is you have to store it in the in this blob, right? That you set up and you'll have a nice XEL file over there. It won't be in all these little subfolders and all this stuff. It'll be where you, you store it. You can just query that one directly. So I feel like this is a really nice option for Azure uh, SQL database. And then finally, I mentioned before about managed instance, since it is in Azure as well, it's very similar. Like I mentioned on the, uh, the, the summary slide with that table, that it's very similar to SQL Server Audit. I'm sorry, SQL Server on a VM, right? So you can do SQL Server Audit or extended events. And it's just, you know, there's the GUI, everything's there. It's just the storage. So you have to store it in a blob in Azure, right? So that's the big difference. And here's the resources slide, different stuff you might want to use. I put a couple more links for RDS. It's like, like I mentioned earlier, it's very similar to using managed instance type. So, but a couple slides for you there to use. And I would really appreciate you giving feedback because you know, the conference really wants the feedback, but I really like feedback. Please be honest brutal, whatever, you know, just tell me what you think because it helps me improve. It helps me help you present to you better, give you better information. And then finally, I want to say thank you to SQL Bits for having me. Thank you to all of you who attended. Please hit me up on Twitter or visit my blog. I'm on GitHub, SQL Kitty, so my slides are out there and code like demo stuff is out there too. So, but please, I'm always happy to field questions. So please contact me if you, you know, need something answered. I'll put this back up, put the feedback up for you for a second in case you missed that. Thank you very much, uh, Josephine. I do not see any questions on this side and also online, I do not see questions. So if you have a question, please put it in the chat. I can uh, ask it to Josephine. Okay. So I will wait a, one more minute, uh, Josephine, before we're closing down. Okay, sounds good. It's a lot. It's, <laughs> it's a lot to squeeze in there, and I'm really excited to go over the ha the PowerShell part in a longer presentation. So later this year, I uh, will be getting all that into my presentations. So for those of you who think, "Oof, I don't want to do this auditing with all this stuff in the portal. It's just a mess of stuff." There will be a session coming up that will cover that more PowerShell and really narrow, you know, focusing your audit, like how SQL Server audit is very powerful in SQL Server. You can make the Azure auditing more powerful that way by modifying it. Sounds great. Yes, so I don't see any questions anymore. Thank you very much, Josephine. Thank and you. have a great day. Thank you. Hey, thank you too. Yeah, take care. Okay. <laughs>